Today, I want to share two stories. My first story that changed my lifestyle completely. It's about how my parents introduced me to my passion, sailing. And the second story is about how I changed other people's lives by doing social service, which I was involved in my school, the Sino Project. I hope I can create a ripple effect today with these two stories. Growing up, I was a very active kid, running, jumping around the house 24-7. And my dad was a real sports lover. My mom, she was just sick of chasing me around. So they came up with the idea that me starting a sport. First, I tried gymnastics, where they pricked every five-year-old, where they pricked every five-year-old to stretch more. I thought, not for me. Second, I tried swimming. And remember those lines to jump in the pool? Well, the turn never came to me because I continuously ran back at the row. This is me in gymnastics, and this is me in the swimming pool. <laughs> Literally me. <laughs> and this picture is taken just before the swimming course, 10 minutes. You see how happy I am. And apparently no one noticed that I was in jumping in the pool for like a year. Hi, mom. And what, not swimming, so what? What a coincidence, when my, when my dad was watching TV, suddenly an ad showed up. And he shouted, sailing, as Arshimas shouted, Eureka. So I was very excited and curious about the sport, so I agreed to visit some sailing clubs just the next day with him. Uh, when we went there, uh, the trainer was talking about how the sailing equipment worked, how to care of our other clothes, and how the daily plan of the course. And when you're a kid, you only pay attention to the keywords like ice cream and chocolate. My examples are all sweets, but the keyword back then was dolphins. And my first vision of sailing was riding dolphins. This is literally what I thought. And it took me some time to understand that we weren't riding dolphins. We were on the sailboats, obviously. I was heartbroken. But that's just how my sailing journey began back in 2009, and I never regret a moment. I had the best stories there. I have type of stories that I want to tell to my kids and to my grandkids and to their kids if I live that long enough. But I learned so much from it. First, I learned to find solutions to my own problems. I learned to speak for myself. I learned to race from competing and I learn to be aggressive when it's needed. And sailing isn't like any other sports. It just doesn't take only four or five hours in a day. It takes your whole day. So most importantly, I learned to manage my time. We all brag that we don't have enough time for schoolwork or other activities with school. Well, some kids don't. It's not because they love all the endless projects or homework it's because they can't go to school. They can't go to school because schools are in such bad conditions, because of transportation problems, because they need to work to support their family's income. This is where I move on to my second part. I believe in equality and I think everyone should be equal, which seems impossible, but at least everyone should be given a chance to be equal. In Turkey, there are 20 million kids and teens between the ages 6 and 18. And 3 million of them are not in schools, which means 15% of them don't go to school, which is a very scary, dangerous, and a sad percentage. Because today's kids, tomorrow's adults, as we all say. It's getting difficult to go to schools in villages because they're in such bad condition and we lose kids in traffic accidents every day while they're trying to reach education. You might question, what can I do about this? Well, in my school, me, bunch of my friends, and some teachers are working on the Sino project. It's where we, we are rebuilding a base school, which is unused, and we're turning it to a culture center. 
which will include numerous numbers of books, working space for kids and grown-ups, and also some workshops. The project may look like a really tiny step, but if some students and teachers can drop Pearl Ripple and rebuild a school building, it's even possible that one day every kid going to school with good conditions. Well, among these ripples, there are sometimes spaces and waves that go up high and low. Just like when I sail, the wind is not stable and there are sometimes pushs and pulls. Like the prep students weren't allowed in this project last year and I was a prep student, so I had to work really hard to get in. Like, I missed my flight because I ran to the wrong airport. Thanks God, the third airport is still under construction. So during our lifespan, there are ripples that we follow or create, and they cause us to make positive changes and effects. I want to end my speech with a very well-known Turkish poet, Nazım Hikmet's poem on living. You must take living seriously. I mean, such an extent that, for example, your arms are tied from your back. Your back is on the wall, or in a laboratory with your white shirt, with your huge glasses. You must be able to die for people, even for people you have never seen. Although nobody forced you to do this, although you know that living is the most real, the most beautiful thing. Thank you for listening.